So when I made my wine cellar and posted the video on YouTube, I've probably been asked a hundred times since for details on how I made the wine racks myself. It's really not hard. It's a super easy project if you've got any carpentry skills at all. I'll show you the details of essentially the, the process that I used. Um, I don't need any racks, so I'm not going to build any more, but I will show you the details of how I built them. Now you will notice that I use plywood sides. Um, this is birch ply, so it looks really nice and it matches with the fur that I used for all the lumber. You can use any lumber you like. I use fur because it's plentiful around where I live. And if you buy it in bulk like I did when we were doing the, the cabinetry of our house, it was pretty cheap. Uh, use whatever you like. You can use pine if you want. Um, I don't recommend a lot of knots in it. Maybe you can cut around them, but uh, you can use whatever you like. You know, I probably wouldn't recommend using hardwood if, it, if you had to pay a bundle for it, but if you've got hardwoods in your neighborhood, go for it. Um, you'll see that what I did is I use the verticals are inch and a quarter fur, and the horizontals are three quarter inch by three quarter inch by roughly 12 inches deep. Um, and I put a back on them, but you don't need to. You can leave the sides open if you're, uh, you know, that's how most of the professional racks are. And there's no reason to not do that. I just wanted it a little more finished. So I'll show you the details on how I did it. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and uh, good luck. Okay, so to make wine cabinets, I recommend you make a jig. It's gonna go so much faster for you. You can just knock these things out in no time flat. Now, I begin the process always, always, always with what's called a story stick. I, I got this idea out of a book probably 20 some odd years ago. And it has saved me so much headache because now when I'm building things, I very rarely make a mistake. Uh, it's huge. So for example, um, I make a story stick for every single piece of furniture or cabinet I make, especially if it's cabinets. Um, so here's one for a cabinet I'm making inside my house right now. One side is the vertical direction. And so basically uh, using this as an example, here's the base, then there's some trim, then I've got drawer, 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 spaced out inside here is the trim pieces. I use uh, some quarter round or some, uh, some bead molding inside, all the way up, top molding, and then the top. I turn it over, and again, this time I have, I have it cut to the full width of the cabinet. And so here I've got an overhang of the cabinet top, then I've got the side, then I have an internal strengthener, then, then you know, the, here's where the microwave is gonna sit. And so I've got all these things laid out. You can see it exactly. There's nothing that gets missed. This is really huge. So anyway, setting that one on the side, I strongly recommend you make a story stick for, for your wine racks, uh, especially if they're gonna fit in a specific spot. If you're just making a standard rack, just sit in the middle of um, you know a closet or whatever, then then knock yourself out and, and you can take a risk. But I recommend I recommend uh, you do it. Um, I always begin, frankly, with a piece of leftover plywood. Um, it's typically straight, it's smooth, it's clear, you know, easy to write on. And so this is just a, a piece that I had laying around. Um, and so what I've done here is I start working from the bottom and I start laying it out. And so. Um, let's see. With this one, I'm going to have it sitting on a base. Here's a tip for you. Don't ever make your cap, your wine racks trying to go all the way to the ceiling. It won't fit. You've got to be able to rotate this thing in place. Um, and so what I typically do is I'll put, I'll build a base unit that goes on the floor. I'll screw that down. I'll get that perfectly leveled. And then my cabinets will actually sit on top of that and I'll either uh, nail or screw them into the base unit. Uh, but the nice thing about that is that gives me that extra three inches at the bottom where I have extra room to wiggle it in the door and tilt it up vertically and things like that. So here what I'm laying out is I've got my base and then I've got my, uh, my horizontal stringers that are going to go across to fit the wine. Okay, now be careful with wine, obviously, because you get uh, a standard California Cabernet. The bottles are about three inches in, uh, in diameter. But if you get a white or a French bottle, they, they can, uh, three and a half is pretty standard. Um, if you do champagne, man, it can get even bigger than that. And so measure some of your wine. Uh, we don't typically drink champagne, so I didn't even build any for that. But um, I did, I do make my racks 
uh, three and three quarter inches. Basically to fit anything like this, plus a little wiggle room uh, beyond. And so what that means is that from one, uh, from the bottom of one end, essentially to the top of the other is three and a half. Um, and that just, uh, or sorry, three and three quarters. And that gives you the space. Um, and so you can kind of lay this out and make sure that, you know, your stuff isn't gonna, uh, isn't gonna drop through. You know, I can see, okay, that's gonna sit nicely. So once you've got your story stick laid out, then I make a jig out of, in this case, I'm using some leftover OSB, uh, just some flat board that I had uh, laying around. Uh, I recommend you use something, you know, plywood. OSB is, is great for it because it's just so cheap. You know, it's like eight bucks a sheet, maybe, I don't know, that was a couple of years ago. But uh, anyways, once you've got your story stick, then you can lay things out exactly how you're going to have them on um, on the route. And okay, so here's what I do: is I put my marks to the top of my cross members. So my cross member is going to go up against that mark there, and I'm going to do the same thing all the way up. And you want your story stick to be accurate, so really be you know have some nice dark lines and lay it out. Now, just for the record. I don't need any more wine racking, and so this is an example I'm laying out for you. Okay, so the next thing, once I'm laying things out, is I have, I've cut out some two and a quarter inch strips of plywood. It doesn't have to be plywood, it can be whatever you've got laying around. Um, but the key is, it needs to be at least probably two and a quarter inches thick. And the reason for that is you want, you're gonna have basically three layers of your of your uh, three quarter inch wood, and two and a quarter is basically three layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take one. It's going to go across the bottom. I'm going to glue and nail that in place. I'm going to do the same thing going up the side, and I'm going to do the same thing going up the other side. And what that's going to allow me to do is take my verticals. They're gonna set in here, they're gonna set in here, and then I'm gonna put, uh, put pieces of wood that will space my, my horizontal pieces all the way up, so. Okay, so now that my jig is done, and obviously I'm just making a short version. So for you, you might take this eight feet long or however long you need it to be. And maybe you've got some diagonals and you know, knock yourself out. 
Um, I certainly did that. But for me, I made a short base unit and then I made a middle slanted unit and then I made a, a second uh, unit that sat above that. But anyways, so my vertical pieces are inch and a, uh, inch and a half. That's what I recommend. There's no magic to that number at all. So, so that's just going to sit in here on both sides. Everything sits where it should. You're going to want to make a whole bunch of three quarter inch by three quarter inch by roughly 12 inches. Again, there's no magic to these numbers. They can be whatever you need them to be. But um, what I typically do is uh, I'll put one across. Oh, here, let me flip this around. Okay, so I have this in here. I'm going to put one across the bottom. That's going to hold the bottom bottle of wine. Typically, I will throw just a dab of glue on there. Not a lot because you don't want squeezing out everywhere. And and again, this is uh, you know there's not a lot of weight is supported here. So you want uh, you want some that'll help. I'm using one and a quarter inch brads, which uh, do not go all the way through two pieces of wood. Okay, so then the next piece, and this is important, goes up against the bottom of, of my, uh, my horizontal pieces. And you'll remember that these are going to be basically three and three quarters from the bottom of one to the bottom of the next because that's how I laid it out in my story stick. So, a little more. Not enough glue. Blew up a couple of them just while I have them here. Again, they push up against they push up against this one to the top, and that way everything is lined up. Now you don't need a nail gun, it sure saves a lot of time, but you don't need it. Could clamp these down. I could put a brick on them. I could do uh, any number of things. Okay, so I've taken this all the way up to where I need to to the top. Now again, this is just an example, so I'm only doing so. Pull it out. All right, so I've got one side of my vertical now. I'm gonna make the second side once I'm all the way to the top. I flip it over. And it should drop right down my jig if I've done a good job. Now, I just threw this jig together quickly, and it, glue hasn't had time to set, so I'm kind of taking a risk here. Normally, I would give everything a little more time, but in this case, we're doing it fast. So, throw a little more glue, glue on. thing about doing it this way is if my lumber is not exactly three quarters by three quarter inch and something's not quite perfect it doesn't really matter because I'm pushing everything up against the top and that way the wine is going to sit level it's your eyes not going to see it basically
Okay, so now I can pull out my piece and I've got my center pieces. They're strong. Um, I have, uh, because I've put two nails in each one and glue, I can set it off to the side right now and I can immediately start on my next one. Um, so make as many of these as you need. They will all be identical and you'll be able to then uh, build a base and glue or screw it uh, to the base across or maybe you just want to you know, have a piece going across here. Again, glue. Um, I probably wouldn't put nails on the front. Um, you'll never notice the nails going in here, but across the front I probably wouldn't. But anyway, the important things to know is you don't really need anything but a table saw. If you've got a nail gun, it's gonna make your life a lot faster for sure. Um, I use inch and a quarter brads to do a project like this. Uh, I use standard wood glue, nothing fancy, um, which is whatever the cheapest thing you can get is. Um, the important things are, I would, while you can use any table saw, doesn't have to be a good table saw even, take the time to get your fence dialed in so that your cuts are smooth. So I would recommend having a good blade on it, and I would recommend really taking the time to get your fence right. Um, and the result is that when you're done, you can look at your cuts and you really don't need to sand them. Um, you can, if you want. I mean, sanding the faces is probably not a bad idea, but I'm not gonna sand every single thing all the way through the inside of this. I'm just not gonna. Um, and I didn't, and you saw my wine room. It looks great. Um, but if you, you know, if your cuts look like a beaver made them, your wine, your wine uh, rack is gonna look like garbage. So get your cuts dialed in so that things are good. Um, I'm gonna try to place the, uh, the SketchUp model that I used. I modeled all of this out beforehand. And then once I was certain everything was gonna fit in the room, then I built my story stick and then built my jig. And finally, when it actually comes to cutting wood and knocking everything out, it goes super fast. So feel free to ask questions. If there's a better way to do something, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, anything I can do to help, I certainly will, but I wish you the best.